Hello, my dear students, and welcome to this small session. In this session, we are going to just talk about the Nernst equation. What exactly is the Nernst equation and how do we deal with it? Nernst equation happens to be a very important part of the electrochemistry chapter. By Nernst equation, you are able to calculate the cell potential of the cell in which we have different concentrations. So let's begin over with the Nernst equation. Do not forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. So to talk about the Nernst equation, let us first of all understand that how do we find the potential of a cell. When we talk about the potential of the cell, we have that E cell, E naught cell in fact, E naught cell is equal to E naught of the cathode minus E naught of the anode. What we understand is that cathode is the right terminal, the right electrode. That is why it is a very strict convention which is never violated. So what we can write it is, we can always say that E naught right minus E naught left. So that is how we are able to find the standard cell potential. Further, when we talk about the right electrode, it is always the reduction electrode. I believe you remember that the cathode is the electrode where reduction takes place. So here it is E naught reduction. Now, this is not the reduction potential you need to remember. We are always going to talk about the reduction potential only. This reduction means the reduction electrode. In the same manner, we write it as E naught oxidation. This is not the oxidation potential. This is the oxidation electrode. We are always going to use the reduction potential only. Never ever even think about using oxidation potentials. These are going to be the formula which you are going to learn more and more formula you will have to learn, but that does not in the translate into the more marks. More the formula you learn, more is the chance that you are going to get confused. So only learn one formula and use it in different ways. So here we have the reduction potential and we have the oxidation electrode, the reduction potential of both these electrodes. So this is how we are able to find the E naught cell. Once we have found the potential of the cell, the standard potential of the cell, now comes the use of the Nernst equation. Talking about the Nernst equation, this talks about the relation of the cell potential with the concentration or the partial pressure of the various reacting species and the products. Reacting species, when we talk about the reacting species could be gases, could be the solid metals, that could be the uh, various uh, electrodes. The reacting species could be ions, could be anything. So we need to understand, we are going to talk about the partial pressure and the concentration of the various reacting species and their products so that whatever species are there in the balanced redox equation. So here we have, let us say we talk about an equation. An equation we are going to talk about like uh, MnO4 minus plus H2C2O4 in presence of the acid to give Mn2 plus plus CO2 plus H2O. Now let's talk about this equation. And while talking about this equation, let's write it here. Here it is going to be MnO4 minus plus H2C2O4 plus H plus gives us Mn2 plus plus CO2 plus H2O. Let's balance this equation. When we balance this equation, we know that here it is overall 10 electron change. Okay. We perfectly know that MnO4 minus is going to accept five electrons to get converted into Mn2 plus. And H2C2O4 is going to accept two electrons. That's going to release two electrons to get converted into CO2. So here, what we find is it's going to be two, 
Here it is going to come out to be 5. Here it is going to be 2. Here it's going to be 10. And then to balance the oxygen, we have 4, 20, 28. 28 oxygens are there. Here we have 20. Here we are going to get 8 H2O. And we have already 16. So it is 6 H+. Plus. The equation is balanced here. Isn't it? 5 twos are 10 plus 6, 16. 8 twos are 16. 8, 8 oxygen. Here we have 10, 20, 28. Here we are going to 2, 4, 8. And here it's going to 5, 4, so 20. So the species are balanced. This is a balanced redox equation. Clear? Now in this balanced redox equation, there is going to be a change of 10 electrons. I hope you remember how to balance the redox equations. Now once we have balanced the redox equation, now we are going to write the Nernst equation. Nernst equation says, E cell. Now E cell could be, I could just write it as E or I could write it as E because E cell because it's going to be the electrode also for it is valid for the electrodes as well as it is valid for the cells. So when we talk about the E cell, E cell is equal to E not cell minus 2.303. Now this 2.303 is the conversion factor which we use to convert from the natural log to the log to the base 10. So it is a conversion factor 2.303. Now we are not going to go into the mathematics where we get the 2.303, but this is what we have as 2.303. 2.303 RT by NF log Q. Now let's understand the various terms. Here we can even write it as E is equal to E naught, which could be of the electrode or of the cell, minus 2.303 RT by, again, NF log Q. Now let's understand the various terms here in this particular equation. As we can very well understand, E naught cell is the standard cell potential. 2.303 is the conversion factor from natural log to the log to the base 10. R is the gas constant. We are going to use the SI units, so this R is going to be 8.31 Joule. Kelvin inverse, mole inverse. So that is going to be the units and the value of this R. When we talk about the temperature, temperature could be anything. In fact, it could be any temperature, but most often we are going to have the temperature as 298 Kelvin. When we talk about F, F is what we call as Faraday. Faraday is constant. Or Faraday, when we talk about Faraday, this is, as NCRT has said, this Faraday is 96487 Coulomb, which is approximately take it as 96500 Coulomb. So that is what we have as Faraday. As you can very well understand that all these terms that I have just told you, these are all constant, 2.303, R, T, F, they are all constants. So what we can actually do is we can have 2.303, R, T by F. We can actually calculate this value. And once we calculate this particular value, this value actually turns out to be 0 0.0591. And remember, this particular term has the dimensions. N is a dimensionless quantity, Q is a dimensionless quantity, E not has a value, and this particular value is going to have a dimension of volt. So this particular value is 0 0.0591 volts. So we have just talked about this. So once we have got this particular value at 298 Kelvin, the Nernst equation simply translates to be E cell is equal to E naught cell minus 0 0.0591 by N log Q. Now here we need to mention the temperature at 298 Kelvin. Temperature can be variable. Now here I'm not putting any value, so the dimensions I'm not put, but it's going to be actually volt. Now, having talked about this, now we need to understand what is this N 
and what is this q n is the number of electrons involved in a balanced redox equation or half equation and that is the reduction equation we are going to talk only about the reduction potential so we are going to talk only about the reduction equation as such this is valid even for the oxidation equation yes it is valid for the oxidation equation but it is better for us not to deal with it if we are going to deal with the oxidation equation it is actually going to backfire because we are going to get confused it happened with me when i was talking about the paper examination board examination of mine then in that case i actually got confused whether i'm going to use which formula because for me the equation was there but i was not sure whether i'm using the right formula or not what needs to be subtracted what needs to be added so more the formula are there more is the chance of getting confused so i would sincerely request you to use only one equation and that is for the reduction so here we are going to talk about the half equation this is the number of electrons which are involved in this balanced equation the equation that we have just seen for this particular equation the number of electron change is 10 so here it becomes 10 electrons so the value of n is 10 for this particular equation once we have talked about this now when we talk about q q is what we call as the reaction quotient now reaction quotient the word has come from the equilibrium chapter in this case equilibrium chapter what is reaction quotient reaction quotient has similar expression as compared to the equilibrium constant the only difference between the equilibrium constant and the reaction quotient is that equilibrium constant is specifically at equilibrium while reaction quotient is at any point in the reaction it could be at the beginning it could be at the end the reaction quotient can have any value from zero to infinity yes it can have the value of zero it can have the value of infinity at the initial point the reaction quotient has the value of zero because the product are at a zero concentration when the reaction is just to begin and at the end of the reaction when all the reactants have been consumed only the products remain the reaction quotient is going to have the value of infinity because the product are the only thing which are present in the reaction so here when we talk about the reaction quotient what we find this reaction quotient is equal to the concentration of the products raised to power their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the product of the concentration of the reactants raised to power their respective stoichiometric coefficients. And further, we need to understand that if we have the gases in the products or the reactants then in that case we can even use the partial pressure of the products raised to power their respective stoichiometric coefficients and please remember when we talk about the partial pressures these partial pressure have to be in the units of power we cannot use atmosphere we cannot use mmhg or any other units okay fine the people use atmosphere but that is not to be done it should be bar because when we are using the pressure in bar then only the equilibrium constant or the reaction quotient becomes a dimensionless quantity so here we have the products we here we have the reactants now what we need to do this is what we have as the reaction quotient clear now we need to understand that p and r are stoichiometric coefficient this p r they depend on how the equation is balanced in the similar manner the n also depends on how the equation is balanced if you change the balancing of the equation you are actually going to change the stoichiometric coefficient as well as the number of electrons that are involved in the equation once 
here we have got the n p r so just remember that this n p r that is the change in electrons and stoichiometric coefficients must be obtained from same equation many times students make a mistake of taking the equation some equation stoichiometric coefficient from some other equation and they take the number of electrons okay this particular equation is going to have that many electron change please don't do it whatever equation you write get the n and q from the same equation by changing the balancing of the equation you actually change the value of n and q just remember that clear for this particular equation that is we have 2 m n o 4 minus plus 5 c h 2 c 2 o 4 plus 6 h plus giving us 2 m n 2 plus plus 10 c o 2 plus 8 h 2 o in this particular equation the value of n is equal to 10 and these are the stoichiometric coefficients that we have for the reactant and the products. To write the value of Q, that is going to be the product of the concentration of the products. So here products are going to be M and 2 plus. Raised to power their respective stoichiometric coefficients. Here we have the concentration of CO2 raised to power n and here is going to be h2o raised to power 8 and now here it is a slight twist h2o is not only a product it is also the solvent solvent means huge excess which simply means that the change in concentration of water is not going to affect the rate of the reaction it is not going to affect the equilibrium constant as well and that is why this is not included in the equation just remember it h2o is a solvent divided by concentration of mno4 minus raised to power 2 concentration of h2c2o4 raised to power 5 into concentration of h plus raised to power 6 now, H plus is not a solvent, H plus is not a catalyst, H plus is actually a reactant, so it needs to be included in the equation. So, that is what we have as the Q. Now, the Nernst equation for this particular reaction is going to become E cell is equal to E naught cell minus 0 0.0591 divided by N. N here is 10 log value of q it is going to be m n 2 plus raised to power 2 c o 2 raised to power 10 divided by m n o 4 minus raised to power 2 into h 2 c 2 o 4 raised to power 5 h plus raised to power 6. Now this equation is valid at 298 Kelvin. Okay, so this is valid for 298 Kelvin. Clear? Now this is how we can talk about the Nernst equation. I hope you have understood how to use the Nernst equation. We have not talked about any application of the Nernst equation. We have just talked about how to use the Nernst equation. I believe this is going to clear some of your doubts and it will allow you to understand what is the meaning of the Nernst equation. Thank you. We are going to meet in the next class. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.